We're back with the Breakfast and Plus TV Africa. We'll be speaking with Obono Kuku this morning. Uh, he joins us from the FCT. <laughs> well, I remember the conversation <laughs> we've had, you know, about the FCT. Uh, Kuku, it's good to have you join us this morning. All right, thanks for having me. All right, then a bit of a background to our conversation. Nigeria recorded an annual headline inflation rate of 18.85%. That was in 2022 in what was remarkably a year ravaged by several economic headwinds. Now, according to research website, Narolytics, Nigeria experiences worst inflation rate in the last 21 years. The last time Nigeria recorded an annual inflation rate higher than 18.85% was in 2021, when the Consumer Price Index rose by an average of 18.87%. The African giant just recovered uh, from COVID-19 pandemic and ripple effects from the hashtag NSAS movement in 2020 faced further hardship due to Russia's invasion of Ukraine in February 2022, which was followed by inflationary woes. Now, on a, a look at the monthly trend shows that now just inflation rate breached a 17-year ceiling of 21.47% in November, largely attributed to global energy crisis depreciation of the exchange rate, uh, food crisis, and surge in transportation costs, among others. Thank you so much, Ugona Okuku, uh, for joining us. Ugona Okuku is an investment and economic development expert from Abuja. He joins us now on The Breakfast to give insight on how to you know, find a way out of the economic issues that we're faced with. Once again, thanks for joining thanks for us. Having me. Yes, but yeah, thank uh, you for having me. before we get to the other part of the conversation, how to get out of it, because you are an expert, but how did we, you know, get to experience this kind of inflation that we did, you know, just 21 years after? All right, thanks for having me once again. And um, let's start the conversation by, like, the, the, you asked the right question. So um, I'll try to break it down, you know, because this thing has been, it's been long coming whether you like it or not. See, unless you build a structured economic development plan and follow it through, there's no way on earth, just like a child who's giving birth to you, who starts, you know, school, goes through kindergarten, goes through primary education, secondary education, it keeps growing. So as soon as you miss out on any, it will affect the child eventually in future. So what am I trying to say? We've talked about infrastructure being a major, a, a, you know, a major panacea to development. And then we have been playing lip, lip service for the past few years over, you know, bringing the right infrastructure that we need to industrialize our nation. We don't have refining capacity as a nation. Um, when it comes to petroleum products, we don't have well detailed financial engineering structure from in the financial sector to support the SMEs. We don't have logistics, uh, you know, contract and compliance system, you know, so a whole lot. So when things happen, they will definitely become a problem to you, you know, in the future. So let me bring it back. So if a nation exists where you are still finding it difficult, I wrote something on my Facebook page a few days ago. I said, can you imagine a country where you don't have a streamlined ticket or, or, or tax tax system where people have to pay over 37 i mean trailers and lorries that carry goods from one point to another have to you know pay over 36 36 or 37 you know uh, um dues to different organizations local government this that, that that for them to be able to move goods from one point to another you can imagine what that does so it's easier for you to move goods from shanghai port to Bene Republic than to move goods from Macmillan bus stop, which is uh, on Lagos Ibadan Expressway, to Bene Republic. So what does that tell you? Our participation in, 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 in the global financial market is so low. So what are we even bringing to the table? Yes, we are the giant of Africa. So a lot of things have actually gone wrong. So it's a lot of work that we need to do, starting from number one, being able to put the right investment into infrastructure, being able to provide power, if you don't have a good refine, if you don't have a, a, you know the right refining capacity for your petroleum product, so the little shock that has happened, or, or let me call it, let me not say little, the global shock that has happened in the petroleum industry, in in in, in, in cost generally in the world, it affected us because one, 
the little income we are making from from rent and um, sales of crude oil, we are using to import petroleum products. So why would you have FX issues? These are the things that are contributing to the inflation that we are talking about. So a whole lot of things. The flooding that happened before the flooding happened. Did we have a proper designed irrigation system where we are looking for water in the north for irrigation, and at the end of the day, we are still suffering from flooding. So there's a lot. Insecurity has actually affected whatever it is that has happened to our economy because when we started talking about our food belt being attacked by terrorists people thought it was just um it was just uh, you know insurgents no these people are they, they were deliberate they knew what they were doing they went to areas benue taraba they went to places where we have strong cultivating you know strength they went there to attack our people so that farmers will run out from the from from uh, you know from their cultivation uh, lawn so that at the end of the day we will not start facing food, food crisis so if you are dependent on high interest rates from banks, you are dependent on high FX exchange rates to import food. What do you expect? The food will be, will be expensive. So there's a whole lot that has happened to uh, the, the economy that we need a whole lot, you know, a whole lot of more strategic system and style to be able to come out of it. All right, Obona, uh, the, the headline inflation, you know, got to a head in November last year. You know, it, um, it went above the ceiling and it was about 21.47%, largely attributed to the global um, um, energy crisis. Sometimes we might not really have um, a bit of control over that. But let's talk about some other issues uh, that were attributed to the cause of, of um, that um, particular margin. Uh, talk about um, the exchange rate, depreciation of um, the Naira and all of that food crisis which you have mentioned and transportation costs. For our exchange rate regime, over time, the CBN comes out with various policies, uh, you know, dollar for Naira and all of that, and it's as though um, most of these uh, policies are misplaced and uh, they're not actually bringing the, uh, the desired change that uh, we are looking for. What do we do about our Forex regime? Okay, let me start by saying um, I always I always describe you know poly, uh, fiscal policy measures and monetary policy measures as a football using a football a, a football team. Now the monetary policy guys are the defenders. The the the, 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 the fiscal policy guys are actually the strikers. Now the success of a team is largely dependent on what the strikers do than what the defenders do for you to have victory. What am I trying to say in essence? Until you have a robust you know, fiscal policy measure, it would be difficult. So all the policies, all the uh, uh, measures that central bank have been doing, are, you know, it's just like you are losing a match and then everybody falls back to defense, to defense line to see how you can just defend the Naira. So those policies will never, ever solve the problem until you are able to earn dollars. Nigeria does not print dollars. Nigeria can only earn dollars. What are the means to earn dollars? You have to bring out goods and services, provide to international markets or your participation in global global value chain. Those are the things that will help you earn those dollars. And those are the dollars which you will now use for things that you will need dollars for as a nation. So for you to be able to, so you need, for you to be able to come out of that problem, all you need to do is to increase your foreign exchange, uh, you know, your participation in foreign exchange market. So if you don't have things that you're exporting or if you're importing, if you're if you are earning little, the, little, the little you're earning and you're using it to go back to the market to purchase things that are unnecessary, using it to feed the, 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 the subsidy regime, at the end of the day, you'll be, you, there'll, there'll be, there'll, you'll be cash strapped. So pretty much, um, Central Bank have tried to do what they are supposed to do, and I believe my illustration has been able to explain it even to a layman, that the defender does not decide who wins. It is a striker who decides who wins in any, any match. So if the fiscal policy guys have not designed a structure or been able to build our refineries to start working so that we don't expend the little uh, you know, effects that we have gotten on trying to trying to try, try, trying to buy petroleum products. So at the end of the day, we'll find ourselves in the same situation. I say this all the time. The every single thing you see in Nigeria, almost 80% of what you see in Nigeria are all imported. So we are we are highly import dependent as a nation. And you can't import without FX. So every the, the, the pressure on the FX is so high because our manufacturing capacity, our productive capacity is so low, and that is very bad. So until we're able to grow what we eat, be able to manufacture what we use, you know, simple things like that will continue to be in this situation as a nation. 
Okay, let's even look at the fact that, you know, chief economists are saying that we probably might face, face a, a global uh, recession. And for Nigeria, uh, there's been a lot of reports, I mean, more like an assurance uh, from, uh, you know, stakeholders. One would say the Minister of Finance and the Minister saying that w we have what it takes, you know, to cushion the effect. Uh, for us, Forex exchange would be able to, you know, uh, sustain us. W what do you make of this? Well, you see, um, like I always say, we're, we're a huge economy, or, you know, in potentially a huge economy. So there's so much you can do to actually um, earn end dollars. Now, there are areas that are on top. There are things, there are areas we've not started participating in. If we have a strong and a robust participation in the solid mineral sector, yes, that can earn us a lot of foreign exchange. Like the gold belt that we have that runs all the way from Niger to, to, to Zamfara State, if we're able to tap into that, we, we, we have more gold than Ghana and South Africa as a nation, lead ore. These are things that are needed in the, in the technology space, uh, tantalites. These are things that if we, you know, put in energy to see how we can make them work, we can actually begin to become the foreign exchange earner for us as a nation. Services, for God's sake, there are things that we can do. We have a young population that we can train and put out there for people to actually hire and then we can earn, you know, earn a lot of uh, a foreign exchange. So what I'm saying, what I'm trying to say in a sense, what they're saying is right, but the strategy to actually actual, uh, to actualize these things are the things that we are asking. Let's sit down, you know, draw up, you know, a, you know, a, a, a plan that will be able to help us actualize it. So it is possible, but we need to actually, we need, we need, a, we need a whole, a whole lot of critical thinking and, uh, you know, uh, and structuring. All right, and then uh, food inflation is another issue that we uh, look, uh, we should look at holistically. We've talked about our monetary uh, policy and, of course, the fiscal policy. But let's talk, let's come back home and talk about uh, food security because uh, f food prices are just skyrocketing by the day. So a school of thought would say that uh, we uh, uh, grow all of those uh, produce uh, in the country. How come they are on the increase by the day? You know, and some would say that uh, the issues of flooding and insecurity, you know, are major or causal factors to why we are not producing enough. How do we address this issue of food insecurity? Because by the day, Nigerians are not going to bed uh, with foods in their stomach. Now, it's a whole lot of work, um, if you ask me. And uh, I say this because um, the capacity to which we, um, are, you know, face agriculture is not the capacity that you that is required for you to be able to feed over 200 million people. Now, security is very crucial. If we're able to push back the insurgents, you see, it's going to give a lot of time and ample time and opportunity for those who are farmers, you know, those who earn a living from agriculture to go back to farm. Now, again, the, the, the way we handle animal husbandry, the, the, the dairy industry, you know, we're still paying lip service who've not been able to strategically, you know, put out, you know, structures that will help us. You know, we, you can't have cattle roll, roll, roam all over the streets of Nigeria moving from from, from the north to the south, and you think you can make the best out of it. The, the, the cow definitely will not lactate. So there are things we need to reconsider the, the structure of, um, you know, having ranches or, you know, have, have it done the way it is done all over the world. So um, we need to also invest a, you know, a whole lot in infrastructure. I said something earlier. Track, you know, you know, you know, people that move goods, lorries that move goods from one point to another. I'm talking about from farm gates to the market. They are spending so much money on paying levies to known and unknown structured and unstructured organizations that people don't know who they are. They have to pay for signage. They have to pay for for different things, radio license, different things. Oh, for what, 37, 37 licenses that they have to pay for them to carry goods from the from 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 the farm gate to the to and somebody to, to the market somebody needs to look at this you can look at it you know holistically then again we need to also uh, consider you know having a financial product that will fit or suit you know the farming population that we have to support them because if you don't the food crisis is imminent you cannot continue like this 
So I'm, what I'm just trying to say in essence is, uh, 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 okay, until we begin to, you know, uh, um, have large farming strategy, large agro uh, agro systems, it will be very difficult for us to come out of this. We're talking about 200 million people. For you to feed 200 million mouths, you can't be having a cassava farm that is the, the biggest cassava farm in Nigeria is less than 10,000 hectares. And that is very wrong. You cannot play anywhere. I mean, you can't do anything with that. So we need to be able to, you know, uh, like I said, design more products, get more people, get, you know, that, you know, diversify. And, you know, when I talk about diversification, we're discussing being able to get those who have idle funds to go into agriculture, give them incentives when they go into agriculture. So design, design, strategically design products that will attract people into agriculture. So those are the things, you know, a few things that I can think of right now that we can do and many more. Well, I'm sure that we're already talking about how to wiggle out a way of uh, the economic situation that we're faced with, talking about headline inflation and what have you. But just as we coast this down in, in less than a minute, what kind of economy should we expect if you have, uh, you know, inflation, of course it's high, and a recession in 2023? <laughs> it's going to be a very huge. It's, it's going to be. It's going to be a very, um, a, you know, very strong. And um, uh, let me just use the word a very strong one to tackle, because whether we like it or not, 2023 immediately after the election. Of course, you've heard all the candidates who tell you we are going to take out subsidies. So as soon as you take out subsidy, that means the inflation is going to, you know, surge you know, surge higher. So with that kind of surge, you expect, you know, a, a, a recession to hit almost immediately. But that said, I'm just saying is, that's why we need very strategic governments that will be able to, you know, pull resources together. You know, pull resources, when I'm talking about resources, I'm talking about those who have the, what it takes in their head to redesign and design, you know, strategies and plans that will be able to get out of that, get us out of that kind of issue as fast as possible. So it's going to be tough, but we will be able to surmount it as far as I'm concerned. Because I know we have people that have capacity. It's just that we've, we've had, we've just had bad leadership over, the, over you know, you know, over, over the years. All right. Thank you so much, Ogbenna Okoko, investment and economic development expert who joined us from Abuja. Thank you so much for all of um, your your thoughts uh, that you have shared uh, this morning. We do appreciate them. All right, thank you for having me. All right, so that's the size of the show for today. We've looked at uh, the economy, we've looked at um, the Electoral Act, and of course, we'll always remind you it's about 9 days uh, 15. Uh, the clock is ticking, it's actually on uh, your screen right now. 9 days 15. Uh, hours and uh, six uh, minutes and over 20 seconds for you to go and pick up your permanent voter card. My name is Justin Akadone. And I am Messi Eboko. It's all right to follow us on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. Subscribe to our YouTube channel on Plus TV Africa, Plus TV Africa Lifestyle. If you missed out on the conversation, we'll join the newsroom at 9 o'clock for the news brief. We ask that you stay with us. Have a great morning. Yeah, bye for now.